Hello, everyone. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about section 6.5, which is on a very, very clean and simple concept called the uh, triangle inequality. And uh, we're going to be spending some time with that. So uh, if you remember, the word inequality refers to some symbols that we've seen many, many times before, which is the greater than symbol, the less than symbol, the greater than or equal to symbol, or the less than or equal to symbol. So we're going to be talking about these things that are not equal to each other, but are have a strong relationship between each other. So let's talk about some. So uh, you've already done your exploration, and in the exploration, you were talking about large sides and large angles, small sides and small angles. So let's formalize that a little bit. Right here, what we have is we have some clear information for you that you can really, really subscribe to. The longest sides are always opposite the largest angles, and the shortest sides are always opposite the smallest angles. Let's take a look at having a problem to take uh, to understand that. So um, right here in our first example, it says list the sides of the triangle PQR in order from the shortest to the longest. So if you take a look, I did not actually give you any side lengths here. Um, I've asked you about sides, but the information that I've provided you with is actually about angles. And so here's how it's going to work. In general, if you can find a small angle like our 45 degree angle right here, then it is going to be opposite a very short side. So that means that this side over here on the far right is going to be our shortest side. And that is going to be side QR. Then if you can find yourself a medium sized angle, like our 55 right here, not too big, not too small, it is going to be opposite a medium length side. So that would be PQ. And lastly, if you can find your largest angle, which in this case is our 80 degree angle, it is going to be opposite our longest side, which in this case is going to be PR. Now I've written these letters. Um, you could have called this first one RQ, I called it QR. You could have called the second one QP, I call it PQ. And you could have called the third one RP, but I call it PR. The order of the letters doesn't really matter. The order of the sides, in fact, do. This one's the shortest, this one's the longest. With that in mind, uh, something else I want to let you know about is that in general, I'm going to go from shortest to longest, um, and that's an important thing. I don't want you to lose credit on a checkpoint or a homework assignment just because I decided to trick you and go from longest to shortest one time. So we're going to try to stay consistent. We'll always go from the smallest thing to the biggest thing uh, just to make sure that it's nice and consistent for you. Here's a problem that's very similar to that, but slightly different. This time I'm asking about large and small angles, but I'm going to give you information about short and long sides. Same basic deal is going to apply. You find those smallest sides and they're going to be opposite their shorter, uh, the smallest angles as well. And then you're going to find mediums. And then lastly, your largest sides are going to go with your largest angles. Let's take a look at this guy right here. So now if you take a look at example number two right here, what I want you to notice is that there are multiple triangles happening here. Now the general directions are very much the same. It says list the sides in order from the shortest to the longest. Now rather than just having three sides or three angles right here, we have many, many, many. So we're gonna have to do a little bit more work. Now uh, the first idea then would obviously be, well, let's find the biggest angles and we'll start there. Um, so, or, or the smallest angles and we'll start there and then we'll go all the way up to the biggest angles. If you take a look right here, one of our largest angles that we have is this 110 degree angle. But if you look at it, it is part of a very, very small triangle. And so those side lengths are going to be very, very short. Our biggest triangle right over here has got some relatively small angle measures. And, uh, and so that doesn't necessarily mean that you always want to start off with the smallest angle measures and go all the way up to the very largest angle measures. What you really want to do is you want to start with the smallest triangles and go up to the largest triangles, and then you'll work within each triangle. So let's break that down. This triangle right down here is clearly our smallest one. It is very, very small compared to the other two triangles. That's triangle AED. Then after I'm done looking at that triangle and specifically, I'm gonna move on to this medium sized triangle, which looks to be uh, called triangle ABD. And then lastly, our largest triangle is over here. It's got some very long sides. I'm gonna call that one BCD. Okay, so now let's focus on our smallest triangle right here. For our smallest triangle, um, AED, I noticed that I've got two angles already, but I'm missing the third one. So I'd like to get that. So let's see if we can get it. There is a, a theorem called the triangle sum theorem that states that all three angles always add up to 180. So if I take 180 degrees and I subtract the two values that I'm given, 110 and 40, that will give me the third angle, which is going to be very small. It's gonna be a 30 degree angle. 
Okay, so now I can label my drawing with that and now I can do my comparison. Since once again, we're going from smallest to largest, we're gonna to wanna to start with that small angle and the side opposite of it, which is gonna be ED. Okay, then we're gonna to go to our medium size, which is 40, and we'll go to side opposite, which is AE. And then lastly, we'll go to our largest angle and the side opposite that, which will be AD. Now this one is a particularly interesting one. Okay, so that's our third one. And that means we're done with this small triangle right here and we're gonna move on to our medium sized triangle. So now we'll be focusing on A, uh, B, D, this guy right here. Now the funny thing is that this triangle A, B, D shares the side A, D. So this last one that we wrote down right here for our triangle A, E, D happens to be the first one that we're gonna use for A, B, D. So this side right here is shared by both triangles. All right, but uh, once again, similar situation. We once again have two angles, but we need our third one. So another triangle sum theorem will help us out. If we take 180 degrees and we subtract the 75 and the 40, that'll give us our third angle, which is gonna be 65. Okay, now we can go through our process once again, starting off with the smallest angles and working our way up. As I had stated earlier, our smallest angle is 40 and that side opposite is AD. We already wrote it down once. We don't need to write it down a second time. So we're just gonna leave AD there and we'll be satisfied. Then let's move on to our medium sized angle and that'll give us our medium length side. And then we'll go on to our largest angle and that'll give us our longest side. All right, final one. So now once again, we've hit BD, which is gonna be a side that's shared by the medium sized triangle and the largest triangle. So this one is gonna be shared by both of those guys. Our largest triangle is the last place we need to visit. And once again, we have two angles, but not the third. So let's use our triangle sum theorem for the very last time. Hopefully you're starting to feel like a pro when it comes to using this theorem right here. And we're gonna get our final angle measure, which is very small. And we were expecting it to be because it certainly looks like it's gonna be small, 40 degrees. Okay, so now our smallest angle is gonna be opposite our shortest side, so that's good. Then we will move on to our medium sized angle, which is gonna be opposite our medium length side. And then lastly, our largest angle in this triangle is opposite our longest side, which is gonna be DC. Once again, this is not the largest angle in the picture. The 110 is definitely the largest angle in the picture, but that doesn't mean that the side that is opposite the 110 is gonna be the very last one in the list. It is got to go from smallest triangle to largest triangle, and then you go to the sides within each of those triangles. Next, let's talk about this U-try problem down here at the uh, bottom. I want you to work on this problem, but I also wanna give you a couple hints. So let's take a look at it together to begin with. The question right here says, a boat leaves the dock and travels 2,500 feet to a cave, then 5,000 feet to a beach, and then 6,000 feet back to the dock as shown below. One of the angles in the path is 55 degrees and one is about 24 degrees. What is the angle measure of the path at the cave? Okay, so now what we have right here is we've got this boat going on this journey. We're starting here at the dock. Then what we need to do is we need to travel along 2,500 feet, which is our shortest distance that is listed for us, and that will take us to the cave. Okay, so now I've chosen an arbitrary direction to travel. You could travel any way you wanted, up from the dock, down from the dock, to the right, to the left, it doesn't matter, as long as you travel to the cave, and it's gonna be 2,500 feet. Then from the cave, we're gonna go to the beach. Now you can put, once again, the beach wherever you want. It really doesn't matter. So you can put it anywhere you would like. I'm gonna choose to put the beach further down here. So I'm gonna put my beach down here, and we will travel there. Then after the beach, it's gonna travel right back to the dock, and so not surprisingly, just like all the other problems that we've had so far uh, today, it is another triangle. We have our 2,500 feet distance, then we have our 5,000 feet distance, and then lastly, to get back to the dock is 6,000 feet. Okay, so now um, the next piece, this is the part that is interesting. So now they've given us two angle measures as well, 55 and 24, and they wanna know which one uh, is gonna kind of go where. And so we have a couple of spots to put them, but we really don't know which is which. So uh, you could guess, but that's not a very good choice. So instead we're gonna try to use some of our logic that we've been working on. So first of all, knowing two is great, but knowing three would be better. So let's use our triangle sum theorem again. So 180 minus the 55 minus the 24 is going to give us our third angle measure, which is going to be 101. There you go. Okay, so now we have three angle measures that we're going to be looking at, 55, 24, and 101. Now, uh, the, the smallest angle measure, 24, needs to be opposite the shortest side. So 2,500 was our shortest, and so that means 24 degrees is going to go down here. 
55 is our medium sized angle and it's gonna go opposite our medium length side. So 5,000 was our medium and that's gonna go right here, 55. And then lastly, 101 is clearly our largest angle and that means it needs to go opposite our largest side. Now, if you're looking at my drawing, you're gonna notice that it's not really to scale. That angle doesn't necessarily look like it's 101 degrees and that's okay. It's just the best drawing that we can make. The most important thing is that you understand that it's a triangular drawing. So we have our triangle. Okay, so now let's see if we can answer the question. The question says, what is the angle measure on the path at the cave? So the cave is right here and our angle measure at that cave is 101 degrees. We go. Okay, so now, um, as I'd stated at the beginning of the notes, this is called the triangle inequality theorem. And so this is where we're really gonna take it uh, all the way. So the, um, the triangle inequality works great about uh, comparing side lengths and angle measures, but it also is gonna help us out when we're trying to determine if you can actually build a triangle with the information that you were given. So right here, it states that the sum of the length of any two sides of a triangle has got to be greater than the lengths of the third side. So once again, inequalities greater than right here, greater than is going to be this symbol right there. Okay, so now um, I have this set up in three different combinations, combination one, two, and three, because you can pair up any two, any two side lengths, and then you're going to compare it to the third side length. So let's take a look at our triangle right here and see if we can do some comparing. So now this first set right here, whatever we can add up needs to be greater than AC. AC is this longest side right here, so the other two sides that I'm talking about are sides AB and BC. Okay, so then the another combination um, is if you move the AC from being at the very back of the problem to the very front. So we've got AC right here. AC could get paired up with something like AB or ABC. And then it could get paired up in the same kind of way if we move AC over here. And these all have to be true. Each and every time you set up a triangle, the side lengths have to relate to themselves so that this works every single time. Now, once again, this is not equality. So when you add up these two things, it will not exactly match. It just needs to be bigger. It could be a lot bigger or it could be a little bit bigger, but it needs to be bigger. That's the most important piece. So we're just gonna make sure that it's bigger each time. Now, some of these are pretty anticlimactic. If you look at your picture right here, AC is extremely long and AB is pretty close. So I already am pretty, uh, uh, aware of the fact that AC plus AB is going to be greater than BC. It looks like AC on its own is bigger than BC, and it looks like AB on its own is bigger than BC. So if you take these two long sides and add them together, they're definitely going to be longer than BC. So that's not that big of a surprise. That one's a pretty uh, anticlimactic fact. But some of the other ones, like our first one that we wrote down right here, AB is not bigger than AC, and you would need to add on the BC right here in order to make this fact add up to something that is greater than AC, because AC is our long side right there. So some of them are going to be not so great and some of them are going to be really, really great. But it's important that you, when you're starting off, which is what we're doing today, that you always try all three. So let's try a couple of these out. Here's a first example. So our first example says we have a triangle. Uh, one side of the length is 14 and another has a length of 10. What is the maximum length of the minimum uh, and minimum length of that third side? So what I've done right here is I've drawn myself a small triangle. And the way that I've drawn it is in a very boring way. I just drew um, a basic looking triangle and it looks kind of equilateral, but I am going to label it. So I have my 14 uh, unit long side and my 10 unit long side. And then my third side is going to be the one that I don't know about. Okay, so now just like we were doing here, you can mix and match these three sides that we have in any combination and you need to do it three times. So let's set a couple of these guys up. So the first one that makes the most sense is to add up the two numbers that you're given. So there's my 14 and there's my 10, and they have to add up to something that is greater than my mystery side. That absolutely positively must be true. But then you can start mixing in the mystery side. So let's say we start off with the 14 and we add in the mystery side. Then it has got to be greater than 10. And then lastly, what if we start with the 10? And then we add the mystery side to that. And that has got to be greater than 14. Okay, so let's take a look. So for our first one, we have a really, really nice setup right here. Um, and we can get a number really quickly as well by simplifying 14 plus 10 is gonna give us 24. 
Okay, so now this is gonna be an important piece of information for us. We now know that 24 is gonna be a particular limit. That's about as high as we can go. We can't go much higher than that. For our second one, now if you take a look at this one, this one's not very exciting. So right here it says 14 plus something is greater than 10. Well, the deal here is that 14 is already greater than 10. So adding on to it is just not a very big surprise. So there's not a lot that we can gain from this. Now, if you want to, you don't have to analyze it that same way. Um, you can just use algebra and get to the same kind of result. So if you start using algebra on this problem, you would move your 14 away from our mystery fact right here. And when you do that, you're gonna end up with our question mark greater than negative four. Now remember, we're talking about sides of a triangle. So I already know that the sides of my triangle are never gonna be negative and they're never gonna even be zero. They'll have to be some sort of positive number. So once again, this is not a very exciting fact right here. Yes, I already know that my mystery side has got to be greater than a negative number. I knew that before though. So this isn't a new exciting thing. This is just, um, just a, a kind of a useless fact. It's definitely true, but it's just not helpful. Let's take a look at our third one. So now right now we have 10 and 10 isn't already greater than 14. So it's gonna need some help from the mystery side. And I wanna figure out just exactly how much help it's gonna need. So once again, you can do some algebra this time. I'm gonna use opposite operations to move this guy over. And when I do those opposite operations, I'm gonna get my mystery side is greater than four. So these is gonna be another important limit for me. So I know that my side needs to be larger than four, but it also needs to be smaller than 24. So this is gonna create a range for us. So and that's exactly what they wanted. They want a minimum and a maximum. So this is the easiest way for you to write down that range. My mystery side that I am interested in is going to be somewhere between four and 24. It could be as short as four, or it could be as long as 24, but it, and it can be anything in between, but it can't be any longer than 24, and it can't be any shorter than four. So that is going to be the length of that third side right there. Let's try another problem that's very similar to that. And this is also going to be similar to your exploration. So it says this set right here, decide whether it is possible to construct a triangle with the three given sides. So once again, we have ourselves a triangle and we're trying to determine, can we connect these two sides right up here to form a perfect triangle if we have side lengths of 18, 8, and nine, is it gonna work out or is there always gonna be a gap there? So we're interested to figure out if this is gonna work. So just like we were doing in the last problem, you're gonna to wanna to set up your three combinations and then you're gonna work through each of them. Now, um, also just like last time, I'm gonna to try to make this first one a really, really important one. So um, as we've stated a couple of times, um, you wanna see if you can add things up to be greater than that third side. So one of the things that is gonna be the most important to me is what happens if I take these two smallest sides? What if I take the eight, and the nine and I add those up. They should be bigger than my large side of 18. That's gonna be my first one. That's one that's most interesting to me. Now, uh, similar combinations. Um, what if I take my eight and my 18 and I add those guys up? Well, they should be bigger than nine. And similar to that, but slightly different. What if I take my nine and my 18 and I add those guys? They should be bigger than eight. Okay, so now uh, this one right here I said was really interesting. Um, you wanna find out if eight plus nine is in fact greater than 18. Some of these other ones are not as exciting. I already pretty much know that this one is all set. Um, 18 on its own is greater than nine, so I don't really need to add anything to it. And same thing over here, 18 on its own is already greater than eight. And in fact, nine on its own is already greater than eight. So I don't really need to do this addition right here. They already are checking out quite nicely. This one's gonna be the most important one. So let's take a look at that one first. Eight plus nine is gonna give us 17. And now we have to decide, is this a true fact or a false fact? Is it true that 17 is greater than 18? And the answer to that one is no. Now these ones over here, yes, you can do your addition and there's nothing wrong with that. So by all means, feel free to. Um, if you're gonna add this guy up, you're gonna get 26. Now 26 is certainly greater than nine. And so that one checks out just fine. And then lastly, nine plus 18 is gonna add up and that's gonna give you 27. And that's certainly greater than eight. And so that one checks out as well. Now, it doesn't matter if you have more checks than, uh, than cross outs. Uh, as soon as you get one mistake, then the whole thing is going to break. So the answer to this question, can you build a triangle using the links of eight, and nine, and 18? And the answer is no. No, you can't. And the reason why is because of this guy right here. It doesn't matter if you've got plenty of good ones. As soon as you get one bad one, then you're in trouble. So I like to test this one first because it's usually quick and easy. And then uh, the other ones are usually not very uh, exciting. All right, your turn. See if you can try one out. So we have a, a triangle that has two sides of 23 and 17. And I want to see if we can figure out the, uh, the possible links for that third side. Here's 
Here is my drawing right over here with my 23 inch side and my 17 inch side. I'm gonna start off by adding my 23 and my 17 together, which is gonna give me a maximum value of 40. Then I'm gonna start bringing my mystery side and mixing it in with some of my numbers. Uh, and then I'm gonna solve. Now this one right here is not very exciting. I, uh, 23 was already greater than 17, so I didn't really need to add anything. And so we end up with another case where it's negative. I already knew that my side lengths had to be bigger than a negative number, they had to be bigger than zero. So this one's not super exciting. Third one right here, 17 is not already bigger than 23, so it will need some help. So let's find out exactly how much help it needs. And it turns out that we need a, a minimum side length right here of at least six in order to make it work. So that tells me that my mystery side needs to be somewhere between six and 40. And so that is gonna be the, the, lower po the lowest possible value and the highest possible value. So now, as we've taken a look at a couple of these ones, what you've noticed is that we started off by taking a look at three different terms, but you really didn't always need all three of them because one of them or maybe two of them were not very exciting. 